I could let that intro go on for ages because I quite like the music. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm stuck in the lift. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, everybody. How is everybody tonight? Um, I'm going to talk about creating wealth. This is what this is all about. It's absolutely it's called the Wealth Creation Show. You can see it up there. Um, James, what's been happening this week in the news? Oh, this week. Uh, so, a friend, maybe not a friend, Donald Trump's just had a permission to build 550 houses just off the many estate wow. uh, so his golf uh, expansion uh, what, what do you think the implications of that are then well I'm quite sure he's going to cause a lot of uproar and anger with locals that's his way you know? yeah, but, but why would, why would why now on earth would somebody want to get plan permission I, I suppose if he gets plan permission to build you know, fair enough, but then he's gonna, you know, he's gonna be in the situation where it's it's Aberdeen. You know, is there gonna be a fundamental difference between the golf course Aberdeen and his Aberdeen and the Aberdeen itself? I've no idea. I, I mean, I thought so. Uh, it depends on what model is planning to use, though, because not only will he be trying to attract golfers, and I don't know how many golfers will get on his uh, courses at any one time. Yeah, but he may be looking towards a sort of short term uh, lets. Yeah. In terms of Airbnb type style. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, he will have yep. to apply for planning permission. <laughs> Again, yeah. <laughs> As part of the new legislation coming in for service accommodation. <laughs> Absolutely. It's like just as you're over one hurdle, you've got another one to clear. <laughs> well, effectively, it's two, two lots of planning permission. He needs planning permission to build in the first place and then planning permission to make the, the use a yeah. short term right. Okay. Well, I tell you what, uh, oh God, one of the things I've been doing today is look, new deal, new deal for tenants. Gee, still awake? Oh, <laughs> I tell you what, my head's thumping, and it's like I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm at page seventy out of one hundred and eight pages, and I'm kind of losing the will to live. But it's, it is, to be honest, on a, on a, I, I don't know how they're going to implement any of this at all because it is just. Dare I say it's just farcical? You know, it makes no sense at all. It is, it is daft questions. It is, it is, I, I, you know, I'll probably if I can if I can break out some examples here, um, probably classic examples, and um, if I could see something, um, it's things about you know, um, giving people a mandatory right to keep pets. It's like so. Okay, so I move in, and I've got a mandatory right to keep pets, and I decide to have ten dogs in my house. And as a landlord, you kind of do a damn thing about it now. Well, this is a thing, and this is why there was talk, I mentioned last week, that there's a number of landlords looking to leave sector now because um, it's getting to the point now that we're so regulated and in some instances overly regulated that uh, they just think they've got no control over the property any longer, although yeah. they own it. They take the liability, they take the, you know, they, they take the risk. But they have no control or say over what happens with that property. And in yeah, fact, there's a Times article on the very same thing this week uh, in relation mm -hmm. to Scottish landlords. I'm just, I'm, I tell you what, I'm, I'm, I'm going through it, and there was a couple of things I highlighted in the beginning. This, this Decorate. is really decorating I mean, was, was another thing. Yeah, to be honest, it's like you know, how on earth can you make decorating a mandatory thing? It's like I could, well, okay, so then I could. It's no decorating, it's just to make a you know, to make any improvements you want. It's like, and you kind yes. of think improvements. So, does that mean they can knock down the wall? So, I've done a refurb, I've replastered everything, but it's all right for them to come in then and put up the wallpaper and whatever else. And then After somebody goes right at the back and says, Oh, by the way, I've changed my mind, I'm going to move it in 28 days later. Exactly. Wait a minute, <laughs> you've just I've, I've just completely redecorated and you've completely possibly ruined it. Um, yeah. so. I definitely don't think one size fits all. Um, you know, I thought it was quite interesting that Patrick Harvey actually said improving affordability by introducing an effective national system of rent controls uh, as an aim, uh, a key aim, and it will take uh, it will take time to assemble the evidence we need to have set out uh, some short term reform too. Um, and it's also we review the grounds to leading to the end of a tenancy. Uh, deter landlords from undertaking illegal evictions uh, by increasing penalties and compensation for tenants. Uh, absolutely. I agree that we should deter landlords for illegal evictions, but do you know when I dug into this, this is a quite an interesting one, so it was reported that um, uh, on the documents that they had actually said that 153 
uh, cases were reported in five years from 2013 to 2018, which resulted in, uh, um, and it was illegal evictions. So 153 they resulted in five years were illegal evictions, okay? And of that five years, the 153. So effectively, that's about um, 35 a year. Is that right? About that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. About 35 absolutely. a year. So we'll just say 35 a year. As a result, in the court, because they were all taken to court, and as a result, in the court, only 5% were upheld. So that's 1.53 convictions or illegal evictions every year in Scotland were upheld as illegal evictions. Hey, so, sledgehammer the, a crack of nuts spring to mind? Well, they're trying to solve a problem that barely exists. Doesn't exist. It's like the whole thing with benefit fraud. You know, the vast majority of benefit fraud isn't benefit fraud. It's stakes by DWP. But we yeah. like to ban about this whole, oh, there's, there's four billion pounds wasted in benefit fraud. It's not. It's probably 3.6 million, a billion in uh, key and errors or, you know, whatever yeah. DWP do. It's all about creating this apparently this level playing field, and it's yes. like, but we can't even. We're not on even the same level playing field. We're not even on the same playing field at all. Um, so I don't see. So I was going through the consultation. I was actually preparing my replies and stuff like that. Um, ben Radcliffe, a, a classic example, is Institute of Government and Public Policy. He actually stated on the 13th of January that 2.5 million landlords are in the UK itself. They believe 2.5 million. And I said, well, is that only England? Because you're an English organisation says, no, that's right throughout the UK. And he said of that, we think, uh, we reckon, we don't know, uh, we think uh, 10,500 of these landlords are possibly rogue landlords. Um, okay, Ben, that works out as 0.42% of the landlord yeah. population is rogue landlords. Um, sledgehammer to crack it up. <laughs> the, the other thing with that is, obviously, if they've identified this as a problem, what kind of money are they going to throw at this for such a small problem? Yeah, and, and who's going to pay for it? <laughs> oh, <definitely laughs> yeah. We kind of know what's coming, don't we? Anyway, let's, let's, let's throw that away. <laughs> No, I'll have to go back to it. I will have to give them a formulated response because I don't believe uh, that is the case. That their their commercial reality, and we talked about this commercial reality before, I don't believe that they understand that that process and they understand what it's like boots on the ground. Guys, um, if you're with us tonight, uh, say hello. Um, yes, good evening, Deborah. A good evening as well. Um, st say hello. Stick a wee five in the comments. Tell us that you're here. Uh, tell us the most exciting thing you've done this week or the most exciting thing you've done in your property journey so far. James caught COVID. <laughs> That's probably the most exciting aye, thing aye, you've had. Eh? I um, like Darth Vader at the minute. Um, let's talk about um, some of the things we talked about. Um, the the um, If you get a chance, go back on this feed itself. Watch this. We did a show about viewings, um, about showing your agent. Uh, um, your, should your agent show the view, show them around the property, or should your uh, should you show them around the property yourself? Now, it was primarily aimed at the sales market. But I tell you what, I give away a, a couple of secrets there, <laughs> which um, which I use as an investor in order to get the best value and the best price and the best offer. Um, I made an offer on a property at the weekend via email. I've never even walked in the door, and I made it at five thousand below the market value, and they came back and actually agreed a price with me below the home report value, and I've not even been in the door. Um, but I rejected it because that's where my numbers work and I'm sticking to that plan. Uh, there's plenty more fish in the sea and that's the classic you've got to remember out there is, is creating wealth. It's all about you just wait for the opportunity to appear. It doesn't, don't run out and be patient. I think the most important point out of creating this is be patient. That's really what it comes down to, isn't it? It's not a race. Um, the other things will come up. Other opportunities will come up. You just have to make sure you're prepared and advance for that opportunity to appear. So if you get a chance to uh, go back, watch that. It's about um, episode uh, 80 of Your Viewings. It's on YouTube as well. Um, so if you get a chance to watch that, I'm going to share a couple of posts as well um, and shows it we've actually done. Um, so this is probably the first one. I think you and I did this, James. Um, possibly the premium lettings, how to attract um, high earning tenants. Yes, um, for professional did. tenants. Yeah, we did that show. I'm going to share that with everybody right now. Uh, that's on our YouTube channel. Uh, one of the other ones is longer lettings, 
how to attract and keep tenants for years. We've probably done that as well um, in the past. So I'm going to yeah, save that. Honest, yeah. Share that one as well, uh, guys. If you if you just if you want, just watch that because these are these are real opportunities. Um, and sold with tenants. This is uh, your landlord checklist for buying a tenant a property in Fife. Um, so I'm going to share that post as well uh, for people if they want to click on that as well. So these are all posts, but they also have the link to our website, which also has the podcast on as well and the article. So you get if you get an opportunity, you can read all these as well at your own leisure. But it is that you know that stuff in terms of your knowledge, um, you can develop over time in order to get you in the zone. Um, do you understand what I mean by the zone, James? Absolutely, I'm a bit out of the zone at the minute. <laughs> Not been too well, but uh, yeah, uh, go back to the run. night. I tell you what, though, you've turned up the night, and there's, that is the fundamental difference between people who are successful and people who are not successful. And it's the it's the thing about you know normally you would just go oh I'm just going to get a miss tonight but the reality is it's like I will do today what others will not to achieve tomorrow what others cannot um, and well, I've done that for the last thirty years. Yeah, well, we we brand the show on the fact that we offer this sort of free help and advice. Yeah, and uh, as soon as you get to a stage where you can't be bothered showing up, then you've lost. <laughs> you've automatically lost, you know. So, yeah, I'm here. I'm not great, but we'll, we'll still turn on. As, if anybody's wanting a, a question uh, answered, uh, please feel free to uh, mention it in the comments. We're going over something I went over. I did a real in-depth one on Thursday night with the, with the private group. Um, I did an in-depth dive into actually how you source properties, where the numbers are, how you feel comfortable about it. They got an opportunity, obviously, because it was on Zoom to ask back and forward the questions about it as well. So I'm going to cover that um, right now, and we're going to talk about it as well, James. Uh, incidentally, I missed that, unfortunately. Uh, incident I incidentally, just to say, <laughs> I got rents this week. <laughs> Again. <Yeah. laughs> I think I'll just say that every single week, won't I? <laughs> yeah, I got caught with repairs this month, so uh, not so great time for me. But th but that's that's effectively what happens, you know. When you build it to a portfolio size that I've got, it's like you know every single week you're getting something. Um, oh, absolutely. But then you're obviously doing all the refurbs and everything as well at the same time. And the the advantage of what I've done is what I, what I, what I do is I I do I, I wouldn't I don't like to say lower values because lower values doesn't Im implies that it's not a great property. Um, I like to say it's lower values because it gives higher returns and higher margins. So if you need to invest money in maybe a new boiler because the boiler packs in, maybe the roof goes, maybe the um, electrics go, maybe um, it's unlikely all these will happen. But but these are all things, contingency plans that you think, well, I'm actually making enough margin to accommodate for things like that. And I won't need to keep dipping into my own pocket because... If you've got several of them like that, it's it's, it's kind of like I look at it like the McDonald's principle. You know, if you if you, if you get a formula right, you know, if you get a formula right and you get you get you know what you're doing every single time, all you're doing is taking that formula and duplicating, 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 and it just gives you that. It just does that all the time. It just produces income all the time. Um, so that's how I like to look at it. Um, and the principle. Um, I got. Interestingly enough, uh, what's your thoughts on the Ukraine and um, carry on? You know, do you think that's going to have an impact on the housing market? Uh, I don't think it's going to have a direct impact, but it's going to have an indirect impact because obviously they're talking about uh, Germany gets forty percent of their uh, gas from uh, Russia at the moment, mm -hmm. uh, and they're obviously I pass Ukraine, uh, so. Now that they've been sanctioned, then they're going to be looking to get oil and gas from elsewhere. And that being the case, it's going to drive further exacerbate the drive to push up prices and stuff like that. We're already hitting one pound fifty plus a litre for petrol. Mm -hmm. um, and with all these budgetary things and government policy and whatever else, it's it's probably going to cool the market a little. It won't it won't strangle it, but it'll certainly cool it. Do you think, do you think, remember there's a restriction in supply in the housing market still, there's only about 429 properties on across Fife, um, yep. and I'd, I'd, I'd imagine that that bears resemblance right across Scotland and right across the whole of the UK, to be honest. There's still a huge restriction in supply, um, so do you think that will have an impact? I mean, because I'm thinking, 
that if the value of um, your utilities goes up, then people with bigger houses will consider actually downsizing. Now, the people yes. with the people with the needing the bigger houses will then consider to upsize because they're not particularly bothered because they've maybe got two or three people in the family and their money. So I, I think it might just be a change. I don't because think about it. Um, when it comes to the, for example, let's look at the credit crunch as a prime example. This is classic about you know investment um, return. Um, so let's look at the credit crunch. Everybody went, oh, oh, my God. It's like all oh, your properties are about to have dropped in value. Oh, but I've no intention of selling them, and they're still earning rent. Um, but what happens? Because nobody – it's like, but but everybody that's moving out of the properties because they're having to get repossessed. They're actually having to look for a property to rent because they can't buy. So the reality is they've still got to they've still got to live somewhere, and that's how I ended up maintaining all my, my occupancy rates high as a result yeah. of that. So the occupancy rates were all high, therefore I was still earning the money. So the capital, um, the capital value was immaterial of of what was going on because I had no intention of selling. However, I did, I did make sure that a twenty percent drop would still ensure the fact that I could actually sell, and what we call fire sales. You know, you know what a fire sale is. Basically, it's like yeah. we're going to get rid of this for anything, no matter what price it is. Um, but effectively, at that point, I think I could have still sold for fifty percent of the value of the property, and I still would have got out clean. Yeah. Um, so you know, it's all that things about hedging yourself and making sure you're actually protected against these huge swings that might happen. But the reality is, it's very rare. And I always talk about again about you know somebody else is everybody else is going to go to the wall before you do. Yeah, well, there's there's a, there's a number of variables in there as well, of course, because we don't know how long this this uh, Ukraine thing is going to go on. Yeah, and uh, the government policy changes with things like national insurance. That doesn't happen till April, so we're not really going to get a proper measure of this until June or July, anyway, at the earliest. Mm -hmm. So I think pretty much for the time being, it's business as usual. I think so as well. I, I think there's a golden opportunity for investors out there to actually take advantage of this. And oh, of, uh, you know what it's like when fear when fear kicks in, people start to run for the hills. I'm just sitting looking at the stock market, thinking at what point will I jump in and buy? Yeah, that's, well, that's, that's the only thing I'm, th I'm thinking well, it's going to go lower i'll maybe wait for a wee while and uh, and let it go lower because i know it'll bounce back because if you look at a classic example uh, i wonder if i've got the stock market here um the FTSE 100 let's uh, see if we can find that um FTSE 100 the stock market's struggling, struggling at the moment because uh yeah I've been, I track that pension uh, like a crazy person. I've got a wee charts and stuff that sort of gets pulled together off the metadata. But yeah. uh, my pension's currently worth about 6,000 less than I've actually paid into it. Yeah. So the stock market's in trouble. So let me quickly share that then and show you where it is in relation to this. And this is actually quite interesting because then this compares to property as well when you think about the logic of this. I'll share the FTSE 100 um, index. And that's a good indication about how the stock market's doing. You see that already? Yeah. All right. I do. Okay, so we're on that. And that's the one day. So that shows you what it is like for one day. I wonder if I could get that a wee bit smaller. Um, yeah, okay. That's still easily seeable. So that's for one day. All right. And then you change it to five days. Uh, so obviously it dropped on the 25th. And then it, then yep. it recovered back up. See, it recovers quite quick. And then in a month. And then in six months, over six months, see how that's tracking all the way up there? Yep. And then year to date, and then one year. See how that's gone in one year, six and a half, right up to about seven, two, or yep. seven, five, actually. Um, and then five years. Now watch, see, there's the there's the pandemic. That's what happened. They just dropped like a stone. Incidentally, that's the win when I jumped in and started buying. Because um, that it's a golden opportunity, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, and here's another classic example. Look at the marks. This is when it first started back in 1984 when this index first started. Look at that at 1,096. And it is now up at there. But it's gone up 580%. But yep. incidentally, look at it where it was. Let's look at the last 20 years where it was sitting. We'll, we'll take probably, when are we now? We're sitting at February. So let's go for February. February 2020, uh, 2002, we're looking for it. 
He, uh, so February 2002, yeah. it was sitting at 518. So 5182 in February 2002. Unfortunately, you can't do this like this, you know, in terms of uh, it doesn't let you adjust <laughs> custom wise. So let's look at the the appreciation in the stock market since then. So we're sitting at 7485, 7485 minus uh, 5128 equals 2776. And divide that by 5182 equals, um, uh, where does that come from? See, that's an interesting one. How is that 581? Because that's uh, 5182. I'm just realizing what they're doing. Um, yeah. What they've got there, 7485 minus, um, minus, minus, minus 1096 equals the 689. Divided by 1096 equals the 582. Yeah, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll come to that. That's where they're coming from. Uh, yep. So the, the 5182, so 7458 minus 5182 equals that, 2776. So 2776 divided by 5182 uh, times 100 equals 44%. How much has property gone up over the last 20 years? It doubles uh, every seven to ten years on average. Hundred and seventy percent. There you go then. Forty three percent versus a hundred and seventy percent. And can That's I say enough. yeah? Guess what inflation is over the last twenty years? Seventy percent. Google it. It's seventy percent. I've got the Bank of England index. It's seventy percent. So inflation is seventy percent. You're only making forty three percent over that last twenty years in the FTSE if you actually just track the index. So basically, you're losing money investing in the stock yep. market. It's, it's, wages, cost is, it's the cost is a high risk strat uh, strategy. And if you look at wages over the last twenty years as well, you'll find that they're lagging behind property prices as well. Yeah, so it makes absolute sense. You know, the biggest earner out of this is property, you know, 170%. So you're, you're clearing at least 100% on your money over the last 20 years. And it will still continue to do that because of all the various things. Um, so let's go into some of the numbers. So um, we're just going to do what we normally do in terms of looking for property. Hey, we can't do. Yeah, let's jump on and give you a, give people a classic example. Okay, Um Give us a big, give us a big thumbs up or a five in the comments if you're still with us, just to see you're out there, um, just to make sure. If you've got any questions, as I said, as we're going through this, please feel free to, please feel free to chip in and ask. Uh, more than happy to answer the questions. Um, so we've got this here, right? And what, what's, the, what's your favourite website then? What do you go for? Uh, I like Right Move. Oh, do you? Yeah, yeah. Now, now I'm I'm not a big fan of right move, um, and and it's no because the pay you have to pay extortionate fees to be on them. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I've got I've got plugins, Jim, that that track a uh, property price movement. <laughs> and I've, got, I've got that as well, actually. Um, yeah, it's but but Zupla, Zupla is a better one, and Zupla is a better one. The reason for that is because it has all the agents on it, because a lot of agents can't afford to go on right move because of the price set. Um, right. So they actually stay away from that reason. Uh, let's take Fife, for example. Let's do a quick, quick search in Fife. I think um, sometimes the valuations on a Zoopla could be a bit subjective as well. Yeah. So yeah. for any new investor, potentially, you want to just double-check your figures if you're basing it on the, the valuations that Zoopla mm -hmm. gives you. Okay. Now, let's look at this, for example. Um, so the first thing we do, what do we do? We just jump on the lowest value first. Eh? That's right, I, because I'm a Scotsman and I'm tight. Yep, lowest price first, because that's all we're looking <laughs> for at this point in time. Obviously, that's a featured property, so that's low, no, no list first. Yep. So we've got land at Concarden. We've got, oh, flat at Wellesley Road. Nine grand. Now, is that, not the one that, is, is that not one of the ones that was on that, the console? <laughs> See, that problem at the back. Yeah, see, now, you know the, the problem with, with Wellesley Road, and I hate to say it, the problem with Wellesley Road is it's not got a factor, and there's a lot of people that won't put their hand in their pocket to actually to do it up, um, let's be honest, um, because we were we were offered one to sell recently, and we went, nah, it's all right, um, we'll just, we'll pass, um, because, 
uh, because we don't we don't feel that you know at that price I don't think it will sell. Um, I've actually been in this property before, um, and I know the landlord. And uh, this was the problems it was in the past. Um, it was the very fact that you know you've got a lot of this stuff. I mean, it looks good to now, but to be honest, that must be an old photograph because the scaffolding's out there. Yeah, yeah. the scaffolding's still there. So I don't know why that's no there any longer. All of a sudden, well, I remember when it was still the Swan Hotel. <laughs> yeah. So, in my opinion, it's it, it may look good in terms of the numbers, but I'm not particularly sure if it's the greatest deal ever. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it, it sounds great, but it's actually getting a tenant for it as well could be the major, major issue. So, it would be interesting to see what that sells for. So, let's look land, Keith Court. Don't touch those. Uh, they're not, okay. Now, why is that? Because they're non-mortgageable, aren't they? They're non-mortgageable, uh, and they're past their predicted shelf life. So, yeah. these were, flats were all set up for return and servicemen at the back end of the Second World War. Yeah, and they're supposed to last till the nineteen eighties. Now, some of them have been taken down already, and replaced by housing, but mm -hmm. obviously got some legacy flats there. Uh, you're probably talking about maybe a band E, roughly for mm -hmm. uh, environmental impact and that sort of stuff. So, yeah, twenty five grand. Yeah, might be reasonable cheap for a flat, but yeah, you're going to have problems. Okay, uh, next one, uh, two hundred sixty Methley Road. Don't touch that with a barge pole. That's the one I've got at the back. It's been empty for four years because the right. guy upstairs will not fix his roof and he refuses to do anything about it. So hence the reason why I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. No. <laughs> so that's just because everybody will have seen that just come on recently and it's like, no, don't even consider it because there's, there's big massive holes up here in the roof and he just lets the water go right through to the properties below. It's um, worth mentioning it's an auction property and it's an auction property for a reason. They've obviously had issues trying to get resolution to fix issues, and it's. Do you, you know, find that? Do you find that that's what it is? Because they're quite often properties. find that, particularly with future anyway, that uh, yeah. a lot of these properties are coming with issues. Mm -hmm. So you, 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 I would be wary if, if properties came up at auction. Eh? Yep. Yeah, I, I thought that as well. See how this we plug in. So this we plug yep. in initial entry. It comes up. Um, where did you yep. get that? What was that called again? Uh, I think my one's slightly different. I'm trying to think what it's called. Check my extensions. Uh, no, it's not keywords everywhere. It's another one I've got. It's in here, eh? Property oh, log? Aye, I think so. It's, I'm, I'm not it there. You see that? Okay, property log. Aye. Yeah. So that's the one. So look up property log as a Chrome extension, and that's the wee thing that actually shows this down here. If everybody can see that, I'm circling. So it tells you the price change in the history and when it changed price yeah. automatically. It's just a plug-in that you get on Chrome. So for investors out there that are looking, uh, it's important to have a look at the dates of when it was first listed as well and get an idea yeah. of what it's tracking over time. Mm -hmm. Cash buyers see... only, high street. Yeah. Uh... That's an interesting statement, cash buyers only. wonder why that would be. That was my Let's first thought. Click. click on that straight away. Um, looks all right. Apartment suited, comprising dining room, bedroom, bathroom, gas and heating, cash buyers only. They maybe don't want to entertain somebody because there's possibly not a mortgage, you know, like because it's under the 40 grand valuation. Yep, absolutely. Maybe that's why they're maybe that's why they're just seeing cash buyers only. They don't, they're just wanting to put people off rather than having mm -hmm. a continual stream of people viewing. Some specialist lenders will mortgage anything from about 40 grand plus, but anything yeah. below 40 grand, you're, you, you've got no chance, virtually, unless you're doing it through some sort of mere bridging type thing and you're planning to pay the finance back really, really quickly. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, that one at Julian Court. That's actually, that, in my opinion, that was kind of like, a, that's a really good one. Um, Julian Court, 38 grand. One bedroom uh, up Collidine, good area, uh, decent enough. Kitchen's uh, in the living room. So it's a, it's more a it's more a studio, um, but it does have yeah. a separate bedroom, and then the shower room as well. So it's actually quite good. It looks all right for that price. Yeah. Again, again, you're going to need cash for that, though, really, aren't you? Yeah, you are. Um, absolutely, I would say that as well. So Julian Court's a good one. So you're at that level as well, forty grand, or thereabouts. Let's have a wee look at some other ones. High Street Kirkcaldy, no being a fan. Doesn't look great from the outside. Above a well, shop. Yeah, that's the Harbour uh, Apartments, they call them, I think. 
it used to be a like a, a water and look water things to watch out for epce you're going to have a problem with that because it's not going to be out. it's not going to be one that you're going to have you're going to have problems with the energy i mean it's got a fantastic view um because of where it is but your epc could be a major issue with this so again you know sometimes the cheapest isn't the most attractive one to go for yeah, you're, going to to, you're going to have to do the whole lot insulating the floors and stuff like that and walls what's and your thoughts on link street and kirkcaldy that's a bit rough and rowdy down there yeah i think uh, i would agree um for 50 grand one bedroom flat uh i, I would probably avoid it uh, incidentally it's been on the market since uh, october last year there's a big romanian community down that neck of the woods yeah and, uh, i've nothing against the romanian people obviously but uh yeah uh, i'm surprised it's i'm surprised that nobody's actually picked up i mean saying it's immaculately presented in the actual video well, quite often a lot of people hanging around outside though it doesn't give a very good impression as you drive past and there's like yeah. 15 20 people hanging about outside the flats this it's not particularly great okay yeah, because you've got the lounge there. See, you've got the lounge, and you've got the bedroom, you've got the kitchen. Yeah. So pretty standard layout, really, Absolutely. in terms of that. So you're talking about 50 grand for that. Um, it's been in the market for a wee while. Um, see if I can jump back. And you'll, not get your, uh, you'll save money as well, obviously, because you won't have the uh, additional... What one is it you save again? Is it the additional, additional dwelling? dwelling? Yeah. Well, you would have the additional dwelling on a 50 grand one. Aye, well, it's 50, 50 pound under, though, isn't it? <laughs> Just no, but you mind it's uh, forty grand additional dwelling supplement. Aye, aye, that's right. Sorry, I see it's your, it's the COVID. <laughs> it's, COVID. it's like it's it's I, I, I knew that. It's like both are crescent, fifty grand, buy to let, one bedroom. That's no bad actually. Is that the rate of state? I don't know, I'm but sure. both are. Look um, sure open, plan, open plan kitchen. Oh, but look, 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 look. The bedroom's got a glass screen. See that? Ah, uh, that's a waste of it. <laughs> uh, these are more studios, the way uh, that's done. And, and and I think that's how the other one's done it, Julian. Aye, uh, aye. Uh, it's a slightly partition yeah. glass, isn't it? That's how they built them. Uh, they've built them yeah. to that classic scenario. See it? Yeah. So it's it's like it's like somebody just nicked part of the lounge to be the bedroom. <laughs> if that makes sense. Uh, but fifty grand price point. Um, so there's another one there. So you're you're talking about fifty grand price point for that. Um, I would I would be up a bit more. I would probably go up a bit more in here. Look, Gailey, we're jumping through. There's the more non-mortgageable flats again at auction. Yep. Oh, Look all the price like, changes. It's like all these. Well, there you go. Eh? Look at all the tech. Ah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> and as I say, at some point they're going to get compulsory purchase, knocked down, and sold to Kingdom Housing, probably. <laughs> yeah, retirement. Uh, well, that's what I think is going to happen as well. I mean, it has happened right. with other ones, hasn't it? There was yes, there was the absolutely. ones that were run by the council. They were floored, and actually, Kingdom Housing taking over the land and build a build actually affordable accommodation yeah, on on. Sure. I think it's just. It's just uh, houses, isn't it? Elgin Drive, I think, is one of the big ones. Forest Drive, and I yeah. think Durris Drive is the same, or it's it's heading that way. Yeah. So, now, yeah, they're, they're coming down because they've, they've passed their useful life. And this is like Drive Hill Gardens. They, you know, they're no really rentals because they're they're restricted with the age. You, you've yep. got to be a certain age to have that. Um, Cowden Beath. I don't know if I've been a big fan of Cowden Beath going so far up there. Um, Kirkcaldy, Regents Beaufort, one bedroom again, been on just gone on since February. Initial entry of 55,000 at one bedroom. Sometimes suffer with that, those ones. Sometimes. Just because, do you think that's just because of the age of them? It's the construction. Eventually, the, the sandstone outside weakens and it eventually lets water in. So yep. it becomes sort of capillary action and porous. Ah, you can see it doesn't look too bonny inside. No. Jesus peeps. Aye. Well, I think somebody got halfway through the painting and, and thought I've had enough. It gave up. It's not quite the colour I expected. Aye, it's um, it could have it could have it could have been a lot better, eh? You're right next to the chemist though, and a hairdresser's and a dentist. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can get the floor plan. Uh, and vestibule, shower. So they've probably taken the shower a bit off the bedroom for the shower. 
Aye. Uh, that's, like that. that's typically what happens because most of these WCs would have been out in the out in the garden, wouldn't they? That's yeah. Putting a door at the other side, and you'd have yourself an ensuite or a Jack and Jill. Yeah. Now that's an interesting one. Look, the kitchen's got a door out the back. Aye. See that? So it must be a downstairs. I would have been tempted actually to take away the front door and actually just put the you know take the whole lot up. And then put right. the shower. You know, that's what I would have done. Um, whoever did that in the beginning should have taken away the front door and actually just made the shower apartment at, at there and actually had a bigger bedroom. And then just, then, then just going in for the rear. Would that need planning though? That's the thing. Aye, but I think it was done years ago, so that's that's where that's ended up. So have we got anything decent so far? Um I think before you start hitting decent things, I think there's something round about some. Well, you've got a four and a block there right enough, Mark Hinch. Aye, but that's that's a way above what we're thinking now. Aye. Harcourt Road, 57,000, one bedroom. Again, yeah. that's that same type of property, isn't it? It is, aye. Drysdale again, Leaving what? Road, Orkney, Cornhill. See, see that? Um, see, Thornton's are actually saying that's an ideal buy-to-let property below home report value, but to be honest, there's, there's very few people that actually want to live in Newborough. Yep. Um, and I I, it, it's, coming up there. Yeah, it's not it's not a it's not a really good buy to let proposition. The thing is it's quite I rural think, in nature, so you're 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 probably about the best part of five miles in either direction to get somewhere decent, you know. Yeah. And, I, and I think do you think occupancy rate that? would suffer? What's that sorry? Do you think occupancy rate would suffer with that one? Potentially. You know, you might get a tenant that's a good long term tenant, but you know, uh, all it takes is for a change in job or a change in location for the job. I think, and I think they're going to wait for a while. I, I remember actually on the high street, I had a mint condition four bedroom upper apartment that actually sold for 65,000. And yet they're trying to sell what a two bedroom apartment for 59. Right. Um, but you can see it's been reduced. It's been on since, uh, well, it's been on since July 2020. It's not actually, it's been on earlier than that. It was July t- like 2019. Wow. So it has. So they've actually. <laughs> Aye, it was reduced, okay. So it's been on all that time. So it's been on for yeah. nearly three, three years. Yeah, so there's somebody to say on the portfolio. Um, now, I know that landlord. Um, I, I, I would imagine, I, I've got a funny feeling if it's the same landlord I'm thinking. It's like, his stock's not in good condition at all. <laughs> Tends to be a wee bit run down. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> Uh, Norman Road and Dyser, um, Viceroy Street. Now, we're, we're kind of getting to better stuff now with Viceroy Street and stuff like that, Absolutely. you know? Um, and that's Clayton a scene, Garden. So, uh, Clayton Garden, Clayton North. That's Cadden, that's isn't it? That's Stenton. Oh, yeah, Stenton. Oh, Stenton. I know where they are. Next that's the in the shopping centre. Aye, yeah. the co-op. So, two bedrooms at 63, Balfour Street, 64, uh, Queen Street, Kirtland Walk. Kirtland Walk, Methyl, three bedroom. Inverkeen was an interesting one, Jim, because it's a commuter route to Edinburgh. Yeah. Now, I would have jumped on this straight away. However, I'll take you through it. So, three bedroom, 65 grand, Kirtland Walk, three bedroom lower flat, Perfect for somebody that's needing on one one floor without steps or stairs. So it could yep. it could yep. be them. So it's got a multitude of uses. But the, the biggest challenge here is that. Yes. That'll cost a fortune to get that sorted. Of. So I think instead of yeah. like by the time you do 65 and you add on four percent for your ADS, you're up at 67, 60, 68. And then by the time you add in your legals, you're at seventy. <laughs> by the time by the time you add in the refurb, you're coming up to another maybe about what? I'll take a quick look. Yeah, kitchen's not too much. Another oh, bathroom's not too much. Refurb's another ten or twelve. So you're up to about eighty-two, maybe ninety. Aye, I think the very least. Aye. aye, no worth it. No worth it. That's uh, to me. That's in terms of buy to let. That's no worth it at all. Eh? Um, Douglas Crescent, Bethune Place, um, Salisbury, Crossgate, um, that's been sitting a while. Uh, you could maybe take a punt on that. And, and two bedroom flats in Cooper, you're getting for around about 500 to 550 in terms of rent every single month um, for these types of properties. Um, that's what we're getting just now. So that actually might be a good proposition for Again, someone. If you, look, if you look at a job, it was first listed 2018. Electric. So 
there's maybe a deal to be done there. Electric heating, though. Well, we're moving towards electric anyway, by the looks of things. Fire we bath. Um, do we see anything else? Do we see any other ones? See, I'm, can we look here for here? I'm looking for a gas box on another house to see if, we, if, see if you can actually get gas. You see anything? I can't see a gas box. Yeah. Just have a wee look and see if it's the cooker, see what the cooker is. Ah, cooker's electric as well. Hop. Uh, it's so it's possible, you might, it's possible you might not get gas in there. But you're right. I mean, 2018, it was listed at 70 grand, and it's only gone down to six, five grand since then. It can't, it, well, well it, not a good there. If, you're, if you pick up cheap enough, it might be worth doing. But yeah, you yeah. have to make sure the numbers are right. <laughs> so let's jump on the next one. Um, Ah, what's um, so Vanessa actually said, um, what's additional dwelling new to this? Okay, Vanessa, additional dwelling supplement is the if you buy a second home, um, so if you buy a second home in Scotland, if in, in England as well, they have a something called an additional dwelling supplement, um, for yeah. a second home purchase. Now, in England, it's three percent of the purchase price, in Scotland, it's four percent of the purchase price. So, if you buy something at a second home for a hundred thousand. You'll have to pay another four thousand pound in additional tax on top of the purchase. If you buy it for fifty thousand, you'll have to pay another two thousand in additional tax in Scotland on top of the purchase. Uh, and it's just the way it is. Now, in in terms of my personal opinion, um, I don't think it's neither here nor there. If you're going to keep the property for medium to long term, and the reason for that is because if property prices went up sixteen percent last year. And you paid an extra four percent at the beginning of the year. You've still made a twelve percent differential. Uh, and then in the years to come, when property prices climb up, because we've just talked about in the last twenty years, property prices have gone up one hundred and seventy percent on average. Yeah, that tells you straight away that four percent is going to be neither here nor there in the scope of things. You just have to. What I would say, you just have to suck it up in the beginning and just take that take that initial hit, if that makes sense. That value. <laughs> Commercial road and leading, two bedroom upper flat. Um, okay, let's talk about this one. It's that, that's more or less, is that opposite the primary school? Yeah, that's just round the corner. So here's a classic two bedroom. Uh, there's a primary school there at the back. So good size double bedroom. Now, that, to be honest, that kitchen has been tiled, but it's been painted. It's quite that, I, I noticed that style. I noticed that that unit, and that's, a, yeah. that's the old. Um, what is that? Um, the old oak sort of finish, but it's somebody's actually just painted it grey. Decent enough, eh? That looks all right. Looks all right. What the, so, what the neighbor like? No floor plan. <laughs> neighbors are fine. Um, I know that I know the place very well. The neighbors are fine. Um, this the whole block was actually owned by our landlord in his entirety. Right. Uh, he started to buy the whole lot of them up. Um, because he used to work. He used to have a shop over the road. Um. Um, so he used to have the shop over the road, and he bought them all up at the time. And now he's away. Um, I think they're actually selling them off a bit at a time. So it's been on since October. There's maybe a deal to be done. Um, a two-bedroom flat and leaving like this would probably rent for around about four nine five. So let's take this as a classic example: sixty-seven thousand. We'll jump on our spreadsheet. Um, and here, and I'll do my return on investment. I'll put. I'll put zeros in. Uh, give me a second. I'm going to put zeros in so nobody gets a fright. <laughs> and we build it because I've got huge numbers in here. And everybody go, what? <laughs> How much? Um, and I'll switch that over just now. So we so I hope everybody's understanding where we have. Um, Deborah says um, this has a bathroom on a floor with kitchen, not with bedrooms. Uh, is this an issue for Bicolet? This is a bathroom on floor with kitchen. Uh, no. It's like a um, flat though, not. No. Uh, well, if if you have a bathroom on the same floor next to the kitchen, apparently as long as there's a as long as there's two doorways in between the kitchen and the bathroom, it'll not be the end of the world. But for a prime central location in Leaven, because it is actually central to everything in Leaven. Um, uh, round the corner from the swimming pool, round the corner from B and M, Starbucks, McDonald's, um, the retail park, the swimming pool. As I said, um, easy walking distance to the high street. It's basically, right across the road, you've got Commercial Road, um, and also um, you, you once the train station goes in, it'll be easily walking distance to the train station as well. 
Um, so yeah, convenient. Think of convenience. It's all right. Nobody bothers about that having bedrooms and bathrooms on the same floor. To be honest, um, let's jump in and we'll remove that, and I'll just share the screen for my spreadsheet, and we'll quickly go over some numbers. Geez, that's the time gone in already. Um, okay, see that? Okay, just about there. We go. That's not sure all yet. Maybe just to bring that down a wee shade. Um, is that easier seen there? The whole thing. Yeah. Um, I've actually got all I. Yeah. Okay. So let's look at the purchase price of that one again. I'll just have to re re sixty-seven thousand. So sixty-seven thousand. So sixty-seven. I still think there's a deal to be done there, but yeah. Well, I'm going to I'm going to err on the side of caution. You see, that's why I'm doing that. Twenty-five right. percent uh, loan to value mortgage. Now, if you go for, um, well, let's let's leave that just now. We'll normally assume 3% for a limited company, or um, but we'll change that and revise that when we get it. It's about a thousand pounds to arrange the mortgage. Um, you have rent of 495 in there. Um, that's a pretty good return. <laughs> I'll take that. Now, down there, um, the legals and minor improvements down the bottom right hand corner here. So the legals are around about a thousand pounds to buy. Uh, minor improvements, I usually put in another thousand pound in it. So uh, now this, I think, is the next rental anyway. So it should have compliance with the electricity, and it should have compliance with the smoke detectors and heat detector. Um, I'm is. sure, I'm sure of that. Don't quote me on it, but I'm sure that is an next rental. So it should have compliance already. So that thousand pound, you might not need to spend at all. Um, so it might actually go up in return. But I usually just put two thousand in just in case. Okay. Um, now I'm saying four nine five in this situation. Let's quickly now at this point in time, three percent mortgage. Uh, you, might, you might get a fixed rate deal for five years. If you kept a hundred percent occupancy rate, which is twelve months here, um, and then that was your top line rent, that's your mortgage interest. Now there's a there's a dilemma. A lot of people actually go for capital repayment and mortgages, but I think when you're doing buy to let, you should do interest only. Um, because interest only is deductible straight away. Uh, the capital element isn't if you pay down the loan. So you could end up running out of cash, but paying a tax bill out of the cash that you don't have because you've paid the loan off. Um, plus the fact if you're getting the bank's money for 3% and you can make a, a, a net return of 12.2%, then it would make sense actually just to borrow the bank's money um, and make money on the bank's money and not pay it down. Um, also, if it comes to... If it ever did come at a credit crunch, what I found is because I did interest only mortgages on every single thing, when my when my property, some of my properties did go into negative 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 equity, um, I still had the money because I didn't pay off the capital. Whereas I know some of the landlords that did pay down the capital, when they tried to get the money back out, um, they couldn't because the interest would, you know, the, the capital value wasn't enough anymore. So I would yeah. rather have the money in my bank accumulating aside and actually make money for me rather than actually giving it back to the bank and paying off 3%, if that makes uh, Hopefully, if that makes sense to everybody, just stick a stick a four in the comments if that makes sense to you. Um, we'll leave the five out there now. Somebody might put a nine. <laughs> you never know it. So if that makes sense to you, that would that would work well. Um, I want to jump on to the mortgage works. Um, so I'm going to jump on the mortgage works because I want, I want everybody to see the mortgage works and see what they're doing for rates uh, there. We'll quickly do the market mortgage works here, um, and I'll just click on here. I'll, I'm going to do all this in advance. I'm just uh, rather than actually go back and forward, accept and close. Uh, full details calculator. How much can I borrow? Property loan. So, oh, geez, it's all over the place. I'm used to seeing the mortgage works in a different way. Hi. Uh, I I I don't I'm no used to seeing it as that as that wee portfolio thing. Eh? Uh, buy to let. Um, let's look at buy to let rates, and I'll jump onto that. So select client type. Right. Let's see if I can share this screen next. So stop sharing that one, and I'll jump onto this one, and I'll show you the rates for the mortgage works right now. Thanks, guys. Lots of fours coming through there. 
Uh, that's perfect. That tells me everybody's still on track. So I'm on the mortgage mortgage works now. Now the mortgage works, you can't go direct to them. You can only go through a broker, apparently. So you you could select client type buy to let. So I'm just going into the product finder, buy to let. There's one there for limited company buy to let, but we'll do buy to let to begin with. Uh, and we'll just click all the boxes. Lifetime trackers. I right. right. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've got a few of them still, um, but it's all right. Um, so 75% want to value. The first one that comes up is here. Can you see that all right, James? Yes, I can. 1.19% for two years. So we're going to look at five-year fixed rate deals at 75% loan to value to see where they are, because I think that's your I think that's your best bet, to be honest. Uh, well, 995, is usually, 995 is usually one where I think it works. Yeah. Yeah. At five year deals. Um, so I'm looking for a 995 at five years. Uh, mm. There's one there. All right, there's one. one. There's one. Can you see 2. one? 2.04. 2.04. Oh, yeah, that's so, nine. That's know, one nine five, though. Follow down live, sorry. Uh, I'm not seeing anything at five years. No, 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 no. Five year, 2.14. You're exactly right. It's still there anyway. See here. Yep. Just in this one. So basically, look at that. The current rate reverts back to 5.24. Ouch. That's 2.14. So that's 2.14, five-year fixed rate deal. So that's on your own, right? And then we do limited company. So we'll do that, and we'll see where the limited company goes with that. And we're doing limited company, same sort of thing. Five-year fixed rate deal, 75% uh, loan to value, 3.09. 3 3 that's so yep. 2.14, 3.09. Okay. That's that's getting a lot better, isn't it? Aye. Uh, that's the rate, they they've now factored the rate increases and stuff. And to be yeah. fair, the rates haven't moved that much. Uh, haven't moved dramatically anyway. Yeah. So let's jump back to the share screen. And we'll jump back to there. Right. Here's a classic, right? 3.09. For having a limited company. There, yeah. your, there your money is, and I'll type that in the front, 2574, uh, and 12 percent return, okay? And yep. then for having it, and I've got everything factored in right anyway, and then there you go, 2.14. Look at that. So 2.14 adds on an extra uh, 500 quid. See that? Yep. So you're basically just under another 500 quid for, for doing a... a, a Sole trader, but to be honest, um, I wouldn't do that anymore, would you? Not now. No, yeah, for that differential, right. because I've, I've, yeah. I've as, a, as again, if you're a high rate payer, this thousand pound could end up being another twenty percent on that. So over five years, you could end up paying another, effectively, another thousand pound, yeah. um, in tax, um, over and above. So, uh, so it doesn't make sense actually for the for the benefit. You would actually be better just to take the hit. Plus, the fact is. I've got a funny feeling the mortgage interest rate is going to disappear completely. But that's still me. I mean, these numbers are pretty good, aren't they? Yep. I'd say that's a reasonably good buy, to be fair. I, 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 stupidly, I, I shouldn't have told anybody about this one. Particularly <laughs> 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 well, uh, now, because obviously there, there is a sort of supply and demand uh, imbalance there. And uh, for it's still able to find deals on right move, you know, just as we have done in the last sort of. 20 minutes, yeah. half an hour. Yeah. You know, it's still possible to get a reasonably good uh, deal out there. Yeah. Guys, um, if, you, if you're following me still, give me a thumbs up or put a number five in the post or something like that. Um, if you're still on track with what we're talking about here, if you've got any questions to ask about this spreadsheet and uh, the numbers that we're doing here, more than happy to do that. Uh, a couple of things. We've only got about four or five minutes left. because um, um, So I'm going to talk about this. The reason that I, I go for these high margins, see that 12%? net interest, net return. That's assuming that 30% of that is for um, a managing agent and also for incidentals that you might have to have, like insurance, um, like minor repairs and stuff like that that you put aside. Yep. So I've got half of that there for improvements and incidentals. I've got half of that there for a managing agent as well. Um, so if you don't have improvements or repairs over the years, because you're not needing to do them, then that could probably end up being down at 20%. To be honest, absolutely. And um, so that could be a lot lower. Your return could be a lot higher, but equally it could go the other way as well, depending. Um, but they, so 
what what I'm talking about here is the one the stress test that I start to do now is I've got the number, I'm happy with the rent level. What happens if it drops to eight months? Um, am I still okay? Well, I'm down at still, I've got uh, 2,000, uh, no, it needs to take down. That's no, shouldn't have been there. I've now got a, a, an instance where I've got 1,000 pounds still coming through and that's eight months occupancy. Can I go down to six months? Yep. I can go down to five months. Yep. I can go down to four months. Okay, so five months. I could have that property empty five, uh, seven months of the year and I'd still no need to worry. So yep. occupancy rate is stress tested. I'm quite happy with that level. Um, so what happens in rent? Um, I mean, it might be the case that there's only an abundance of one-bedroom flats needed. So, you know, a one-bedroom typically is about 375. So if I had to if I had to rent it at 375, then where would that take me there? I've still got 1,500 there at 375. Mm -hmm. um, if, if my occupancy went down again to 10 months, I've still got a thousand pounds. If it went down to eight months, it's still 500 pounds. If it went down to seven months, it's still 253. So seven months occupancy at 375, I'm still breaking even and I'm still okay. Um, so again, a good stress test on that. Um, and then also if interest rates go up, if interest rates went up to 7%, now I'm on a five year fixed rate deal here. So I don't need to worry about the interest rates, but say after five years, interest rates went up and I had to bail the brunt. 7% I'd still be okay, 8% I'd still, I'd, that would be the 8% would be the threshold. If I yep. could afford interest rates to go from 3% to 8%, almost, almost triple in, 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 in interest rates, and I still would be breaking even and okay. Now, that's still taking into account the overheads are £1,782, uh, and then I'm saying to myself, well, wait a minute, um, if I always said, if worst comes to worst, I mean, we're, I know we're using managing agents, but if it ever came to it, as long as your mortgage is covered, you're fine. That's covering the mortgage by £153 a month, still. The other thing as well, Jim, is uh, because you have multiple properties, you know, a few uh, poor-performing properties will yep. easily be taken care of by the better-performing ones. You know, if, one goes so down, if one goes down, you're fine, aren't you? And that's the Absolutely. classic. Yeah. And that's what I love about it so much. So this is all about spreading risk. It's all about de-risking your situation. It's all about risk assessment, probability analysis to make sure that you're covered for occupancy rate. You're covered for a drop in rent, possibly. A rent will probably still rents will go up this year, by the way. <laughs> so oh, I can't see that happening. Um, and and what will happen as well? Uh, by the way, rents in Fife have actually in the last ten years have gone up thirty two percent. It was one of the highest performing in the whole of uh, Scotland. In terms of that level so rents have actually gone up again in five they've been really top performing and i think they'll continue to go up as well to realign with the rest of the country um i mean 32 percent of of you know 32 percent of a thousand pound is what for example uh 320 quid um but if you've got a higher rent from glasgow for example and it's two thousand pound for your rent then that's 640 40 quid so it's a lot more, and if it only went up five hundred pound in Glasgow, then that's only twenty five percent. But it's still five hundred pound when it's only three hundred twenty where we are. So right. it's the it's the damn it's the lies, damn lies, and statistics, isn't it? <laughs> the way you present something, it's, it's one of these things. It's like I, but it's been the lowest for ages. If you present it as a monetary value, it says, "Oh, that's, that's really really good," and then if you get a percentage, you're like, "What <laughs> is it performing?" So that's it, guys. I think if you've followed me there and you understand that completely, um, please feel free to watch this over and over again um, and listen to the podcast. You'll pick up wee snippets that you never picked up before in this conversation. And, uh, and that's us for this week. We'll see you next week for the next episode of the Wealth Creation Show. Bye-bye for now. Thanks, guys.